I'm going to be reading the notes that I took from the 11th edition of How to Think Straight About Psychology by Keith A. Stanovich. Most of these notes are going to just be uh, direct from the book. They're the sections that I thought uh, were the most important. This video is just meant to be helpful as maybe a study aid for other people who are reading this book. Uh, obviously, these notes in no way replace actually reading the book, and you should still do that. Chapter 1. Psychology is alive and well and doing fine among the sciences. Okay, so I'm going to start with a chapter 1 summary, which is actually at the end of the chapter, but I like reading it at the beginning, going through the chapter notes, and then reading it again at the end. Psychology is an immensely diverse discipline covering a range of subjects that are not always tied together by common concepts. Instead, what unifies the discipline is that it uses scientific methods to understand behavior. The scientific method is not a strict set of rules, instead it is defined by some very general principles. Three of the most important are that 1. Science employs methods of systematic empiricism, 2. It aims for knowledge that is publicly verifiable, and 3. It seeks problems that are empirically solvable and that yield testable theories, the subject of the next chapter. The structured and controlled observations that define systematic empiricism are the subject of several later chapters of this book. Science renders knowledge public by procedures such as peer review and mechanisms such as replication. Psychology is a young science and thus is often in conflict with so-called folk wisdom. This conflict is typical of all new sciences, but understanding it helps explain some of the hostility directed towards psychology as a discipline. This characteristic of questioning common wisdom also makes psychology an exciting field. Many people are drawn to the discipline because it holds out the possibility of actually testing quote-unquote common sense that has been accepted without question for centuries. 1.1. The Freud Problem If all the members of the American Psychological Association, APA, who are concerned with Freudian psychoanalysis were collected, they would make up less than 5% of the membership. Engel, 2008. From a popular introductory psychology book, Wade and Travis, 2008, Quote, most Freudian concepts were and still are rejected by the most empirically oriented psychologists. Freud's methods of investigation are completely unrepresentative of, of how modern psychologists conduct their research. Freud did not use controlled experimentation. Freud thought that case studies could establish the truth or falsity of theories. Quote, psychoanalysis contained theories and hypotheses but it lacked a method of empirical observation, end quote. Angle 2008, page 17. Critical problem with Freud's work concerns the connection between theory and behavioral data. For a theory to be considered scientific, the link between the theory and behavioral data must meet some minimal requirements. To make a long story short, Freud built an elaborate theory on a database, case studies and introspection, that was not substantial enough to support it. Definition of replicable able to be copied or reproduced exactly. Freud concentrated on building complicated theoretical structures, but he did not, as modern psychologists do, ensure that they would rest on a database of reliable, replicable behavioral relationships. Okay, section 1.2, the diversity of modern psychology. There is one unifying characteristic of modern psychology, the quest to understand behavior by using the methods of science. The word federated means united in an alliance or federation. A textbook once referred to psychology as, quote, a loosely federated intellectual empire that stretches from the domains of the biological sciences on one border to those of the social sciences on the other, end quote. Page 774, Gleitman, 1981. Psychology is composed of an incredibly wide and diverse set of investigations. The, the APA, again, means the American Psychological Association. The APA has 54 different divisions, each representing either a particular area of research or a particular area of practice. Each of the 54 divisions listed in the table is a broad area of study that contains a wide variety of subdivisions. The APS is the Association for Psychological Science. Psychology contains not one grand theory, but many different theories, each covering a limited aspect of behavior. The diversity of psychology guarantees that the task of theoretical unification will be immensely difficult. Indeed, many psychologists would argue that such a unification is impossible. Others, however, are searching for greater unification within the field. 
The coherence of psychology as a discipline has increased over the last three decades due to the theoretical efforts of evolutionary psychologists. These researchers have tried to bring unification to our conceptualization of human psychological processes by viewing them as mechanisms serving critical evolutionary functions such as kinship recognition, mate selection, cooperation, social exchange, and child rearing. The lack of theoretical integration leads some critics of psychology to denigrate the scientific progress that psychology has made. Section 1.3. Unity in Science. Psychology is not just limited to being concerned with human behavior, as there are other disciplines that are also concerned with human behavior, such as economists, sociologists, historians, novelists, political scientists, lawyers, and anthropologists. There are really only two things that justify psychology as an independent discipline. The first is that psychology studies the full range of human and non-human behavior with the techniques of science. The second is that the applications that derive from this knowledge are scientifically based. It attempts to give the public two guarantees. One is that the conclusions about behavior that it produces derive from scientific evidence. The second is that practical applications of psychology have been derived from and tested by scientific methods. The first and most important step that anyone must take in understanding psychology is to realize that, is, that its defining feature is that it is the database scientific study of behavior. Industries surrounding pseudoscientific belief systems have a vested interest in keeping the public convinced that psychology cannot be a science. Another source of resistance to scientific psychology stems from the tendency to oppose the expansion of science into areas where unquestioned authorities and, quote, common sense have long reigned. Learned contemporaries of Galileo refused to look into his new telescope because the existence of the moons of Jupiter would have violated their philosophical and theological beliefs. Paul Broca's Society of Anthropology was opposed in France in the 19th century because knowledge about human beings was thought to be subversive to the state. Section 1.4. What, then, is science? Three important and interrelated features that define science. One, the use of systematic empiricism. Two, the production of public knowledge. And three, the examination of solvable problems. Critical factors to science. One, systematic observation, empirical observation. Two, peer review, scrutiny by trusted members of the scientific community. And three, only addresses problems or questions that could be answered with currently available empirical techniques. So the definition of empiricism, the practice of relying on observation. Scientists find out about the world by examining it. Scientific observations are usually theory-driven. They test different explanations of the nature of the world. They are structured so that, depending on the outcome of the observation, some theories are supported and others rejected. In an important sense, scientific knowledge does not exist at all until it has been submitted to the scientific community for criticism and empirical testing by others. Science makes the idea of public verifiability concrete via the procedure of replication. In order to be considered in the realm of science, a finding must be presented to the scientific community in a way that enables other scientists to attempt the same experiment and, and obtain the same results. For a finding to be accepted by a scientific community, it must be possible for someone other than the original investigator to duplicate it. When a finding is presented in this way, it becomes public. It is no longer the sole possession of the original researcher. It is instead available for other investigators to extend, criticize, or apply in their own ways. One iron-clad criterion that will always work for the public when presented with scientific claims of uncertain validity is the question, have the findings been published in a recognized scientific journal that uses some type of peer review procedure? The answer to this question will almost always separate pseudoscientific claims from the real thing. Peer review is a procedure in which each paper submitted to a research journal is critiqued by several scientists, who then submit their criticisms to an editor. The editor is usually a scientist with an extensive history of work in the specialty area covered by the journal. The editor decides whether the weight of opinion warrants publication of the paper, warrants uh, publication of the paper, publication after further experimentation and statistical analysis, or rejection because the research is flawed or trivial. Legitimate journals publish statements of their editorial policies in each issue and on their websites, so you should always check to see whether a journal is peer-reviewed. This is even more important now because the web has spawned dozens of open access journals that will publish anything for a fee. 
These vanity web journals prey on young scholars desperate to publish in order to get tenure at universities. Their presence on the web makes it harder for the general public to discern peer-reviewed scientific research from the things on the web that look scientific but have not undergone the scrutiny of peer review. Peer review is a minimal criterion, not a stringent one, because most scientific disciplines publish dozens of different journals of varying quality. Most scientific ideas can get published somewhere in the legitimate literature if they meet some rudimentary standards. The idea that only a narrow range of data and theory can get published in science is false. This is an idea often suggested by purveyors of bogus remedies and therapies who try to convince the media and the public that they have been shut out of the scientific outlets by a conspiracy of quote orthodox science but consider for a minute just how many legitimate outlets there are in a field like psychology the apa database psych info summarizes articles from over 2,000 different journals most of these journals are peer-reviewed virtually all Halfway legitimate theories and experiments can find their way into this vast array of publication outlets. Indeed, if anything, there are probably too many scientific journals. The question, quote, will three-year-old children given structured language stimulation during daycare be ready for reading instruction at an earlier age than children not given such extra stimulation, unquote, represents a scientific problem. It is answerable only by currently available empirical methods. The question, quote, are human beings inherently good or inherently evil, end quote, is not an empirical question and thus is simply not in the realm of science. Likewise, the question, what is the meaning of life, is not an empirical question and so is outside the realm of science. The order of science, theory, prediction, test, theory modification. Some problems that are currently unsolvable may become solvable as theory and empirical techniques become more sophisticated. Cognitive psychologist Steven Pinker, 1997, discusses how ignorance can be divided into problems and mysteries. In the case of problems, we know that an answer is possible and what that answer might look like even though we might not actually have the answer yet. In the case of mysteries, we can't even conceive of what an answer might look like. Using this terminology, we can see that science is a process that turns mysteries into problems. In fact, Pinker noted that he wrote his book, How the Mind Works, because, quote, dozens of mysteries of the mind, from mental images to romantic love, have recently been upgraded to problems, end quote. Section 1.5. Psychology and Folk Wisdom. The Problem with Common Sense. The Definition of the Word Implicit. Implied though not plainly expressed. In this section, Stanovich talks about folk wisdom, which is usually a commonly held psychological theory that is unverifiable. Examples of folk wisdom that Stanovich lists include low self-esteem being the cause of aggression in schools. Uh, The opposite was proven true. High self-esteem leads to more aggression. Another example, low self-esteem in students results in poor academic achievement. Again, the inverse is actually true from the empirical evidence. Another example, students are more likely to choose an incorrect answer on a multiple choice question if they doubt their initial choice and change their answer. Again, the opposite is true. Students are more likely to get the answer correct if they change their answer after doubt occurs. Another example, humans only use 10% of their brain power. This is false. Another example, popularized distinctions between left brain and right brain are nonsense. Another example, human memory operates like a tape recorder. Uh, In reality, 30% of the population believes this, and that is not how the human brain operates, or human memory. Uh, And then another, last example, um, millennials are better multitaskers than previous generations, and that is false. Okay, section 1.6, psychology as a young science. Psychology's battle to establish its problems as empirically solvable has only recently been won. As the science progresses, psychologists will address more and more issues that are the subject of strongly held beliefs about human beings because many of these problems are empirically testable. This is the type of opposition to simple empirical facts about human behavior that psychology has to deal with on a regular basis. This, uh, this opposition, when the issue is a heated one, can, can get hostile and be personally directed at psychologists. 
On the one hand, some people object to calling psychology a science and deny that psychologists can establish empirical facts about behavior. On the other hand, there are those who object to the investigation of certain areas of human behavior because they fear that the facts uncovered by psychology might threaten their beliefs. The relative youth of psychology as a science partially explains why many people are confused about the discipline. So here's the chapter one summary again. Psychology is an immensely diverse discipline covering a range of subjects that are not always tied together by common concepts. Instead, what unifies the discipline is that it uses scientific methods to understand behavior. The scientific method is not a strict set of rules. Instead, it is defined by some very general principles. Three of the most important are that 1. Science employs methods of systematic empiricism. 2. It aims for knowledge that is publicly verifiable. And 3. It seeks problems that are empirically solvable and that yield testable theories, the subject of the next chapter. The structured and controlled observations that define systematic empiricism are the subject of several later chapters of this book. Science renders knowledge public by procedures such as peer review and mechanisms such as replication. Psychology is a young science and thus is often in conflict with so-called folk wisdom. This conflict is typical of all new sciences, but understanding it helps to explain some of the hostility directed towards psychology as a discipline. This characteristic of questioning common wisdom also makes psychology an exciting field. Many people are drawn to the discipline because it holds out the possibility of actually testing common sense that has been accepted without question for centuries.